In this episode, we are going to talk about how to perform a good diagnostic process of the diesel particulate filter system in order to ensure its performance and lifespan. Walker, with 63 manufacturing plants distributed throughout the world and eight engineering technical centers, is one of the largest emission control manufacturers, both for the original equipment and for the aftermarket. Walker is also one of the pioneering companies in the development of DPF particle filter systems for passenger vehicles. To guarantee the maximum level of performance of the engine with the minimum consumption, Walker takes special care of the back pressure and noise level of its products, making sure that all the range of emission control products is homologated, following the strictest environmental regulations required in each case. In order to obtain a good understanding of the diagnosis procedure of the vehicles equipped with a diesel particulate filter, as well as its main components, we have prepared for you the following video. Diagnosis of issues and system parts. The starting point for the diagnosis of a DPF system should be a reading of the malfunction log in the electronic unit involved in controlling the particulate filter's status and regeneration to rule out malfunctions in related parts that might directly or indirectly affect the system's operation. The table below shows the main parts of a DPF system. It is composed of exhaust fume temperature sensors, the differential pressure sensor, the glow plugs, the intake manifold butterfly, the EGR valve, the particulate filter itself, and in some vehicles, the fuel additive system. System Sensor Check Exhaust Temperature Sensors To verify the exhaust temperature sensors, the following steps are recommended. Read the temperature measured by the sensors with a diagnosis tool idling and while driving with different driving modes. When idling, the values of the sensors should be more or less the same and near the environmental temperature. When driving, the values may vary slightly according to the vehicle and how it is handled. The approximate temperatures should be Temperature sensor upstream the catalytic converter should remain at 170 degrees Celsius when idling, 650 degrees Celsius with high sustained engine workload and from 450 to 550 degrees Celsius during long medium workloads through a city temperature sensor between the catalytic converter and particulate filter should remain at 144 degrees Celsius when idling, 444 degrees Celsius with high engine workload and from 350 to 370 degrees Celsius during a long drive through a city. Temperature sensor downstream the DPF should remain at 124 degrees Celsius when idling, 388 degrees Celsius with high engine workload and 340 degrees Celsius during a long drive through a city. If there is a considerable discrepancy with the observed values, the temperature sensor's resistance can be measured with a multimeter. For this function, the temperature sensor has to be disconnected and the multimeter's testing point connected to the sensor's terminal. In general, all the exhaust line's temperature sensors are the same and work within the same voltage range, so a comparison diagnosis between them can be run when they are at the same temperature. The temperature sensor should be replaced if the values measured are incorrect or if there is more than a 5% difference between them. If the sensors are in good condition, check the wiring between the sensor and the control unit. To do that, disconnect the temperature sensor and the engine control unit from each other and verify their continuity and isolation using an ohmmeter. Repair the installation if needed. The sensors might be in good condition, showing the right temperature difference when idling, but an excessive one with engine workload. This may be due to a partial obstruction of the particulate filter. The pressure sensor upstream the particulate filter will show a higher value, while the sensor downstream will show a lower one. 
particulate filter differential pressure sensor. To check the differential pressure, keep in mind that there are two kinds of sensors whose main difference is in the number of measurement points. With sensors with one entry, the pressure before the particulate filter is measured. Considering the difference from the value of the atmospheric pressure integrated into the engine control unit. In sensors with two entries, the pressure difference between the filter's entrance and exit is measured by the warping on both sides of the membrane. Although structurally they are different, the way of checking them is the same. To verify the differential pressure sensor, the following steps are recommended. Read the particulate filter's pressure difference by checking the parameters with a diagnosis tool in different driving conditions. The values should be approximately with the car in the ignition position but with the engine stopped the pressure difference should be at the range of 0 to 2 millibars. With the engine switched on in idle the pressure difference should be at the range of 20 to 30 millibars. With the engine at high engine workload, the pressure difference should be at the range of 80 to 100 millibars. If negative values are observed, check the measurement tubes are placed correctly or adjust the sensor if possible. If the values obtained are considerably below the previous ones or there is no coherence variation with workload, Check the condition of the connection pipes from the sensor to the filter's measurement points to see if they are broken or blocked. If the gas pipes are in good condition, check the electric cables between the sensor and the control unit. Disconnect the differential pressure sensor and the engine control unit from each other and verify the line's continuity and isolation using an ometer. Repair the installation if needed. To finish, verify the sensor's power supply from the control unit. With the sensor connected, check the positive and negative voltage and signal. Before replacing the sensor, check the particulate filter's real pressure upstream and downstream the filter if possible. Placing a T-bypass in the intake pressure measurement duct, compare the pressure measured with the pressure gauges to the pressure indicated by the diagnosis tool. If the values are not correct, replace the pressure sensor. If there is any variation in pressure, check for possible holes in the particulate filter holding it up to the light. The undesirable and illegal practice of cancelling the particulate filter system by reprogramming the control unit can cause confusion in this test. In this case, the parameters related to the particulate filter system are completely frozen, whatever the engine's RPMs are. The original software of the control unit will have to be reinstalled as well as a new particulate filter to solve the problem. Actuator control. Glow plug activation. Depending on the type of engine management unit, glow plug operation can be tested by using the diagnosis tool, checking all the power consumption with an ammeter to check their status without having to disassemble them. If activation cannot be done through diagnosis, they can be tested with the help of a multimeter. Glow plugs can be verified by measuring their resistance in the activation unit's connector, verifying the plugs and their installation. The specific resistance of the glow plugs varies depending on the specific engine control unit, but all measurements should be similar, somewhere between 0.5 and 4 ohms, depending on the temperature. To complete the glow system test, check the activation module supply. With the help of an electronic outline, use a multimeter depending on the voltmeter to ensure the supply's voltage, which should be the same as the batteries. Recirculated gas and air control. Although not directly a part of the particulate filter system, the intake manifold gas butterfly and the EGR valve play an important role in the regeneration process. To successfully diagnose the system, ensure these parts are working correctly. 
the intake manifold gas butterflies operation can in general be relatively easily tested by disconnecting the entry duct and observing its movements while closing when the engine stops. For the EGR valve, the procedure is a bit more complicated since it usually has to be disassembled. The correct positioning of both parts is verified by the control unit. If there is any malfunction, it will be recorded by its problem log. If there is a memorized malfunction and the part operates correctly, check the wiring and decarbonize the mechanism to prevent mechanical stiffness. If the symptom persists after running these tests or the warning lights come back on, replace the particulate filter. After replacing the particulate filter, reset the system's memory with an appropriate diagnosis tool. The reset function as well as the particulate filter replacement function resets the dynamic particle accumulation and filter aging counters. System maintenance. Particulate filter systems with fuel additives. The particulate filter systems that use additives incorporate an auxiliary reservoir and a pump to measure out the amount of additive needed, putting it in the fuel tank. The amount of additive injected at the fuel tank is determined by the amount refueled, so depending on the use given to the vehicle, the additive reservoir will need to be filled when its capacity is theoretically insufficient. There are different formulas of additives based on cerium which are generally not compatible with each other. The best way to identify the type of additive needed is by the color of the refill tube connector or reservoir connection. The most frequent additives are Aeolis 176 and Infinum F7995 if the connector is green, Aeolis Powerflex if the connector is blue and DPX42 if it is white or any other color. The filling of the additive requires the reset of the counter or additive counters of the control unit to indicate to the calculation system that the additive deposit is full again. Additive is filled in the deposit using gravity and until it is topped off or by replacing the flexible container reservoir. In some models this involves a sequence of operations that includes filling enough fuel at vehicle's fuel tank to run a full additive filling sequence as a prior step to turning off the warning light. Check that the fuel tank has at least 20 liters of free storage capacity before beginning the operation. Check that the fuel cap sensor works correctly. If when the additive refill warning light comes on, it can be observed that the additive reservoir is still appreciably full, check the dosage pump. To do this, perform its activation repeatedly through the auto-diagnostic process and check the movement of a small amount of cerium. Lastly, check the wiring from the control unit and the pump's activation voltage. I hope you found this video interesting and also that this video has allowed you to better understand the different procedures necessary to make a good diagnosis of the DPF systems and its components. We are Garage Gurus. Join our community, follow us on social media. Thanks for watching this video. The video description contains all the relevant links. Don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and be notified when we post new content. Also, check out our Garage Gurus Online course catalog.